Welcome back. Now that we have looked at quite a few string functions as well as regular expressions, we are now ready to start taking up some serious text mining tasks with R. Now talking about text mining options in R, there are two major options. One is a package called TM, of course, short for text mining. The name of the package is TM. It's a fairly comprehensive package which has quite a bit of functionality. Oh, this is the traditional text mining package in R, uh, but it doesn't follow some of our tidy data processing principles that we have learned when we looked at dplyr and so on. So if we want to leverage that knowledge that we already have, uh, we'll use another package called tidy text, which ties in very well with our dplyr and uh, tidy text processing, uh, tidy data processing approaches. Okay, so these are the two major options, uh, and in this course, we'll be looking at the tidy text package. Of course, uh, you shouldn't think that tidy text is the only option. And once you become familiar with doing certain things with tidy text, and if you think that there are some more advanced things you want to do, I would definitely encourage you to take a look at TM as well. But again, as I've said, in this course, we are only going to be talking about the tidy text packages, a package and all the functionality that it supports. Okay, let's jump right into tidy text. So just like when we had uh, tidy data, right? we said that uh, every cell should basically have an atomic item. Every row represents a case. Every column represents an attribute. Those were all the things that we used in order to describe tidy, tidy data in general. Okay. Now when it comes to tidy text, what we really want to do is to have one token of text per row of our data. Okay, now again, the word token is important here. Suppose your, your unit of analysis for a piece of text is, let's say, a sentence, right? So in that case, in tidy text, you would have one sentence per row of your data. Of course, when I say per row of your data, what I'm meaning is you've got a table or you've got a data frame, and one of the columns is going to be a token of your text that you want to analyze. So if the token is every sentence of a piece of text, then every row of your table or data frame will have a sentence. On the other hand, if your unit of analysis is a word, then every row of your table will contain just one word from your text. In fact, all the examples that we are going to be doing uh, in our course, we will be actually analyzing at the level of the word, right? But the general idea of tidy text is that we want to have one token of our text per row of data. Okay, this will start becoming clear as we go forward. Okay, so in order to, of course, use tidy text, you have to install the package called tidy text. And you can install the package by doing install.packages tidy text. And of course, the code file that, that I have given along with this will contain that as well. Uh, and then, of course, we load the library, library tidy text. And uh, of course, we are going to use dplyr, we are going to use many other functions all of which are already in tidyverse that we've been using up to now. Okay, so tidy text is built in such a way that it goes hand in hand with tidyverse. Okay, and then we are going to, of course, use the library string r because string r has a lot of string processing features, including regular expressions that we've already looked at. Okay, so let's take a look at some text and see what we can do with it. Okay, so suppose we've got the following text. Of course, you can see I'm creating a vector with C, and the first element of the vector is because I could not stop for death. The second element, see, notice the comma here. The second element is he kindly stopped for me, comma. The carriage held, but just ourselves and immortality. This is just some text from a particular po poem, four lines from a particular poem. Okay, so that's the text that we are trying to deal with in this case. Now, let's see. Uh, this text, let's say our unit of analysis is actually going to be the word. So obviously, of course, first of all, this text is not in tidy form because uh, the very first reason is it's not in a table or a data frame. So our first order of business would be to put this into a, a, a data frame or a table and then go on to tidy it up, which is our unit of analysis, let's say, is the word, which is what we are going to use in this particular course. And if our unit of analysis is a word, then of course we have to break it up appropriately. So let's see what code can accomplish all of this 
for us. Okay, so tidy text, as I've already said, is one token per row. Uh, but first of all, let's create a data frame containing the text that we just created. If you recall, our vector was called text. Okay, the vector that we just created here, this was called text. So I'm going to use this vector and create a data frame. Right, so I'm calling the data frame as text underscore df and I'm creating it using the function data underscore frame. Now, of course, the function data underscore frame is really just an alias for tibble. Okay, remember earlier we had used this function tibble. Data underscore frame is just another name for this exact same function. Right, so clearly you can see from this that we are going to create a tibble and it's going to have two columns. One column you can already see is the vector that we just had from the previous slide, the text vector, which had four, four lines from a poem. Okay. Now, of course, we just don't want to have these alone. Instead, we also want to have the line numbers along with this. So I'm creating another vector here, line equals one colon four. Remember, one colon four is nothing but the vector one, two, three, four, right? So what you're going to have is one and first line, two, second line, three, third line, and four, fourth line. That's what we're going to have, right? So if you create this and then you type text df, this is what you're going to see. Okay, so as expected, you can see there's this column called line. Forget this one, two, three, four. This is just, you know, the row number that when you output a table, it just comes as part of the output. This is not part of the data. It's just part of the output, but this is indeed a part of the data. The data has two columns. First one is called line, as we wanted. Second is called text, again, as we wanted. Okay, and the lines are simply going to be one, two, three, four, one to four. So that you have here, and the text, is going to be uh, every element of the vector that we created earlier is going to become an element here, right? So this is the table that we've created. Okay, so now we have a small table with some textual data. So we've got the line number and then we've got the actual text in each of those lines. And of course, earlier I had pointed out that in this course, our unit of analysis is going to be every single word so our first job then is going to be to break up this text into each uh, into single words, right? So let's see how to do that. Okay, so I'm saying text df, which is the data frame that we just created, and we are piping it, and we are using this function called unnest tokens. Unnest tokens. This is a function from the tidy text package that we just uh, loaded in the previous slide, right? And then we say word text. That is what we are saying is take the column called text from this text df okay, and break it into words and call the column as word. Okay. Now by default when it unnest tokens you don't give any options then it's going to consider each word as a token. right? So the word being a token is the default so we have not mentioned it but what we are saying is take this column called text which is here. Take this column break it up into individual words. So this will then become, because will become one word, I, another word, could, another word, not, another word, etc. So break it up by word and put the resulting words in a column called word, right? So that's the name of the column that we have given here, the column called word, right? So we are saying take the column called text and break its words into a column called word. So that's what unnest tokens is going to do. Therefore, as a result of that operation, what you're going to have is this, right? So, of course, the column called line number, line, was there earlier, right? So this new data frame that we are creating called text df does not anymore have a column called text. Instead, it has a column called word containing the individual words from the column called text. Okay, so notice a couple of things. First of all, all the words have been converted into completely lowercase, right? So if you went and looked at the actual data, right, you saw that there, there are uppercase because I, death, H, he, okay? So there are lots of uppercase letters, but unnest tokens has completely converted everything into fully lowercase, okay? So that's one thing that has been done, okay? And it's convenient because you'll be comparing things and so on. The case doesn't really matter most often, right? So we just 
forget the case. Of course, there are options. If you want to retain the case, uh, there are options in the function unless tokens, but we won't go into those options. Okay, so that's one thing that you can notice. This punctuation has also been stripped, right? So all the commas and all the periods are all gone. And each word retains the line number from which it was derived, right? So remember the first line was because I could not stop for death. All of those are from the line number one, right? They're all from line number one. So line number one has been retained, right? So even though we split up the, set, the individual lines into words, we haven't lost the context of the line number from which the word came, okay? Now, of course, there would be many examples uh, or situations where we would want that, okay? We'll see why that is important. So there are many, many situations where we would want that because we might be performing certain kinds of analyses on individual lines, okay? So for example, suppose we've got a list of a thousand tweets, right? And we want to classify each tweet as being either a positive message, a negative message, or a neutral message, right? So then what we need to do is to do the aggregation at the level of each tweet, right? But the positivity, negativity, or neutrality is going to be determined based on how each of the words performs in terms of these sentiments, right? So we would be performing level calculations at the level of the individual words, but then we will later on be aggregating them at the level of each tweet or at the level of each line or at the level of each sentence, okay? So we cannot completely strip the word out of its context. So that's what we are doing here. In this case, we are saying, okay, not only do I want to break the text into words, we also want to retain the original line from which each word came up, okay? So that's one concrete example of how we might do the processing with the tidy text package. So unnest, unnest tokens is one very basic function that it provides. Just to clarify what we just accomplished here. So what we had was this. This is our original text DF. And what we ended up with was this. That is the text broken up into words. And you can see what has happened here. The first word because went there. Of course, it's been converted to lowercase. The second word went I and the third word is here, the last word is here, and so on, okay? Notice also that immortality was spelled with an uppercase M, but it's got converted to lowercase M here, and the B was spelled with an uppercase, it's got uh, cut out and so on, and of course there are, hyphen H, there are hyphens at the end of each of the first three lines, those are gone, okay? So all of this has been accomplished just by using the function unnest tokens, as we saw earlier. So with those basics out of the way, let's take a look at some large scale text processing. So first, what we're going to do in order to obtain large scale uh, quantities of text, we're going to use this package called Jane Austen R. And this package essentially provides us access to the complete text of all the books written by Jane Austen. Okay, so just any, you know, any large body of text uh, will give us the, the raw material to practice our text mining skills on. So I'm just using this. Of course, we can use uh, whatever methods we are learning here, we can use with any large amounts of text we have. So for example, you might have a whole archive of emails, right? Or you might have, uh, let's say, uh, many blog posts on a particular topic or news articles from New York Times or Wall Street Journal or The Economist uh, and so on. Right, so it could be anything, but what we are just using in order to demonstrate everything is the text from the novels of Jane Austen. Okay, so of course you will have to install this package, which means that from the code file that I have given you, you have to uncomment this line and then execute it. And then we are loading the package Jane Austen R. And this package has a function called Austen Books. Notice that it's a function because I've got open parentheses, close parentheses. And what this function returns is the text of all the books written by Jane Austen, right? So for example, what I'm doing is I'm just saying X is assigned the result of Austen books, okay? Which means that after this, X will have the text of all of Jane Austen's books. Now, interestingly, uh, this contains all the books of Jane Austen, but you know, you might know that uh, Google has got this package called, uh, has got this 
a project called Gutenberg in which they scanned many, many, many texts, many open source texts or texts which are out of copyright. They scanned them and they have also extracted all the text out of them, right? So actually we have free access to uh, thousands and thousands of, of books whose full text is now available to us. Later in this lecture, we'll be looking at how to use the Gutenberg package to download some books from Google Books. We'll be analyzing those as well. Okay, so if you are see if you're keen about analyzing certain kinds of textual material, if you look around, you will find that there are packages using which you can get the text of many of these books. Okay, so let's take a look at what X looks like. X looks like this, right? Of course, it's got as you can see here. 73,422 rows, 12 more rows, you've got already 10 here. So it's got a lot of lines. So here are some of the initial lines. So it's saying there is a column called book, which tells us for every line, that line is a piece of text. So that uh, the actual text is called text. And for every line, it tells us which book that particular line came from. Okay, of course, the it's all, uh, sequential in the sense that initially you got all the lines from from the book sense and sense sensibility then after that you've got all the lines from another book and then all the lines from a third book and so on so what ties all the lines together is simply the book from which those lines came okay so the very first line says sense and sensibility it's the title page uh, the next line is blank because the title page had a blank line the third line says by jane austen then again blank 1811 to tell us the year in which the book was written and then several blank lines and then it says chapter one starts chapter one starts and then it goes on you'll see the first line from chapter one and on and on and on right and then uh, chapter two chapter three chapter four all those chapters will finish and then once this book finishes the rows for the next book would start right so if you execute the code and if you look at x and you scroll down quite a bit you know you scroll down like 10,000 rows then you'll start seeing the rows from the next book and so on. Okay, so that's what you're seeing here, how, how this particular uh, data is formatted. 